Hello, and welcome to your first day of class. I'm Marketing Communications Manager Daniel Sloan, and on behalf of Trident, I want to say thank you for taking the next step in your educational journey with us. New students often have a lot of questions, and we are here to help. As a way to ease you into our unique student-centered model, we've designed this webinar that will cover all of the areas vital to success in your chosen program. Let me introduce today's presenters. First, we have Dr. George Del Hierro. He joined Trident in 2010 and currently serves as a full-time instructor and course coordinator in University College. During his time at Trident, he has worked closely with students in a variety of roles, including academic advising, financial aid, and academic probation support services. Dr. Del Hierro earned a PhD in educational leadership from Trident and has received numerous awards during his time at the university, including honors for communication and collaboration, and for student motivation. He is a passionate advocate for student success. Next, we have Tasha Kiriton. She currently ser serves as a Student Success Advisor 3 and part-time faculty member. For the past 10 years, she has helped facilitate initiatives to improve student success, namely as Senior Manager in the Center for Student Success. From assisting with orientation to being a member of the Committee on Academic Standards, her passion is to help students reach their academic dreams. Just a few notes before we begin today's session. Although a portion of this webinar has been pre-recorded, you have the option to ask questions at any time. Look for the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen, find a question box, type in your question, and then hit submit. The FDOC team is behind the scenes right now. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll answer them during the live Q&A session at the end of the presentations. Now I'm gonna hand things off to Tasha to talk about student success tips. Thanks, Daniel, and welcome everybody. We're so excited to have you here. I love Trident University. I've been a student, I teach, and I, I wear many different hats, and I work with students very closely. So this is an exciting time for you to start on your educational path. Here's some things that we're gonna go over today. We're gonna to talk about tips for success. I'm gonna spend some time really digging in there uh, it can be a little nerve wracking when you you haven't done school for a while or it's just a totally new environment. And so we want to make that transition as smooth and comfortable as possible for you. Dr. Del Hierro is going to talk about academic writing. That tends to be one of the main concerns with students when they're coming back to school is how do I write? Uh, how do I get back in the mode of uh, formatting my paper? And then we're going to talk about career and networking support. But I would ask everyone to stick around for what I think is one of my favorite parts of the webinar, which is the questions section. We always have great questions and there's a great student success story at the end. So stay tuned. Now we're going to talk a little bit about just tips for success and moving, moving into your classes for the first time. So whether you've been away for years, maybe this is your first class in college, or maybe you're just transitioning right into a different school, we want you to be confident. Everyone here has a different walk of life and you all bring different perspectives, whether you're a stay-at-home parent, maybe you're a veteran or advanced in your career, or maybe like one of my 89-year-old students who's coming back, who came back and got a master's degree, you're in another season of life and you're ready to move forward. So what I mean by that is know that your perspective will enhance the conversation and your discussions in your class and you are worthy to be here. So feel free to ask questions. Know that you're supported. We're going to talk about your support team. Get to know your professors and peers. As faculty members on here, we often see students a little nervous to reach out to us and there's no, no need for that. We want you to feel connected as a university and, and between you and the student. You as the student, my apologies. We're gonna talk a lot about time management and uh, long-term academic planning, but most importantly, have fun. And this will help with your motivation. This is something, you know, if you ever get stuck or just feel like things are difficult, that's when it's time and a trigger should go off that you need to reach out and connect with us and we are here and we genuinely want to help. So let's start by talking about time management. And this is something very near and dear to my heart as 
Danny Sloan said, I got my master's degree at Trinity University. At the time I was a manager, I had a very extremely premature baby. I was in the office a lot and managing life and work and I wanted to get my master's degree. So I can relate to trying to balance it all. One of my rules was when I got home from work, I wasn't allowed to sit on the couch. And the reason I say that is because it is so easy, especially these days, to just sit down, watch some TV, or get on your phone and just kind of veg out. By staying off the couch, my rule was then I wasn't allowed to sit on the couch until I went and did my homework. So that kind of comes up to our first point, which is create a time management plan. This might be new for some of you, or some of you might live and die by your planner. And so if this is new for you, think about it this way. You're creating a plan to succeed. When I see students not creating a plan, sometimes I, I, I challenge them to do so, and usually they come back and are able to submit more on time. They're able to figure out when they want to go to school for themselves. No one here is telling you to go to school at what time, right? Usually you have a certain amount, whether if it's your CERT program, you have a week, or if it's your master's associates or bachelor's, you have two weeks to do your module. And so anytime within there, you need to set aside a few nights or, or maybe mornings, whatever you, whenever you think best and you have time dedicated, to make that your school time. So when your friends call and they miss you because they haven't seen you in a while, you've got schoolwork to do and you wanna plan your life around that. Now Trident is all about flexibility too. And so consider weekends, holidays, birthdays, vacations. We want you to have a life, but you're now fitting this new component into your schedule. And if you don't make time for it, there just won't be time for it. And so I love to see a student with a plan. If that's something you can do today, get out your planner. I use my planner here. I have a wall calendar that you can see here in the back and I have a digital calendar. So I am all about scheduling your schoolwork. And in the beginning, you may wanna go in every day for even 15 minutes just to get a sense of what do you need to accomplish the things and to kind of feel like you're in the rhythm of school. Cause you're, I always tell students, you know, in your first few sessions, always take classes back to back so that you can get into a good rhythm. Cause once you get out of that rhythm, sometimes it's hard to jump back in. So write down your due dates. Uh, the, the bachelor's and master's and associate's classes are usually due on Sunday nights. So I would always say, try and do your first discussion the first week of the module and your peer responses the following week. If you have questions about this, we can talk more in the Q&A section as well um, and make adjustments to your schedule. But I think the key is to just have a plan, right? Don't get discouraged when you fall behind. Again, as I mentioned before, that's kind of that trigger. If you're falling behind, you may think, oh, well, I don't want to give excuses or it, it, this is just on me. Trust me. We understand what it's like to be adults and to have things come up. And so we can't help you if we don't know what's going on. And it's not to judge you. It's not to be upset with you. It's to say, hey, that's okay. Look, you can, you still have time to do this, or maybe we can help you with this option. Again, there are options and exceptions if needed. And that's something that you, there are eligibility requirements, but we want to help you with. So let's talk a little bit about who you're going to be reaching out to in that support group. When you log into your student portal today on the homepage of mytlc.trident.edu, you will see two photos and those are going, that's consider that kind of like your, your support team, right? There's going to be your student finance advisor and there's going to be your student success advisor. Hey, maybe some of you guys have my face on there. You never know. Uh, I do support a lot of students and I love it. And so in addition to that, right now, if you've just started your program, you are working with your admissions advisor. You've probably built, hopefully you've built 
a good rapport with them. And once they get you all set up in class and started in class within the first two weeks, they're gonna transition you over to someone like myself, a student success advisor, who is then gonna become your point of contact. I'd always encourage you to save their phone number, note when they email you. I always try to only email my students when it's something important that I want them to know. And so just kind of start to get in the groove of checking your emails every day or we text and we call. So, uh, and then finally, the other piece to that puzzle is your instructor. Now that will change from session to session, but they don't know what they, what they don't know, right? And so if you're not submitting work and they don't know what's going on with you, they're just assuming maybe they're not interested in class or, you know, you just don't wanna leave any room for assumptions. So I would always say, even just email your teacher and and give them an update about what's going on or if you have any questions or maybe there's something that you like about the class. So just know that although you're alone in your room or at your desk doing your work, you're not alone. You are part of this bigger Trident family. And so I really hope that when you make it to our commencement and you watch the video or you attend in person, that you can see that you are a part of a much bigger, huge, Trident family. All right, so now we're going to talk about some of our resources. You may be wondering, okay, what is there available for me that's going to help me transition and getting started in school? So in your mytlc.trident.edu portal, there is across the top uh, several options, and one of them on the far right says my resources. Here you'll see a list of resources available to you. Math and writing tend to be a big thing that students are concerned about, rightfully so. Usually students will be, be nervous about managing their time and writing and doing the academic piece. If you can manage your time, you've got half of the battle won. Now here's the resources that could help. Uh, we do use APA formatting as our general formatting style for the school for papers. Now. It is important to note that that's what we stick with, but it's depending on your assignments, it might not be required. Like in a math class, they might not ask that you do APA. We are in the transition right now. Some classes are using edition six and some seven. Uh, that is something that is transition um, in the process of transitioning. So I'd always ask your teacher, but the key is I would encourage you to start to get to know that a quick Google search and you will find so much information on that. But don't be worried, don't, don't be overwhelmed by it. Learning is a gradual process, right? And then the Turnitin Guide, which is something to kind of help you ensure that your work shows as your original work. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is tutoring services. So if you see on this next slide that you are in one of these classes, English 101, Math 101, Statistics in Math 201, Health Statistics, uh, Operations Management, Finance, or any of the Tux courses, there is something, and you'll see on here on the screen, that's called free tutoring. What this is, is we've partnered with tutor.com. And so if you're like me, you stay up late and you do your homework after the kids are in bed and everything's done. Um, and so you can access a tutor anytime, 24-7, and it usually takes about one to two minutes to connect, but it's a great option if you're just feeling like, ah, I just need to ask a few questions or am I doing this right? So I'd encourage you to use that. The next is one of my favorite options because, or resources, because it's something that I help facilitate. Every day I'm in this orientation, helping new students answer questions, have discussions. So if you have not done that as of today, please go in and before you go into your class, complete the online orientation. You'll have access to it for up to six months after you start your program, but it's by far the best way to go in and learn the portal, learn the classroom and how you can navigate, how you can find your teachers, how you can participate in discussion. You can practice submitting work to make sure that you do it correctly. And, and I'm in there every day 
answering questions and just making sure people feel comfortable. And usually the feedback is that, oh my gosh, this is what helped me and overcome that hump and feel comfortable. Next, we're gonna talk about just kind of first steps to do. We've, we've, I've kind of laid the groundwork now, but go in, log in to your class, do your orientation and take a tour of your class. There's not much that you can click on that's gonna break your class or there's really not anything that could break it. But sometimes people are a little nervous, just click around. There's different ways to access different information. And so the more time you spend in the class, the more you're gonna feel comfortable. Look over the syllabus, read the assignments and post your introduction. I always say the introduction is the easiest part. You literally just go in and say, hi, this is me, a little bit about me. And then you get to read about your peers and see that you might have a lot in common or, or something to learn from the peers in class. Ask questions and develop your time management plan. So that's kind of like the pre-gaming for the class, right? You wanna make sure you've read the syllabus, you've read everything, but don't feel overwhelmed. I always felt in college, like the first week of class, that it was a lot of information, but then over time you get reminders, you check your schedule and you're doing good. And so develop that plan and check in with your advisor. I always, whenever I see a student that I don't know, I call them, I'm like, I need to know you because we haven't spoken yet. And I, and I truly want to know them and what their goals are. So in summary today, you're gonna log in, you're gonna complete your orientation, you're gonna introduce yourself in your class. And then I would encourage you by midweek, usually by Wednesday to, submit at least your module one discussion post. That's different than your introduction. That's an actual assignment discussion post. Keep in mind, teachers are held bound to a rubric. What is a rubric? It is a list of criteria that the student needs to meet for each assignment. And so you can see even in your class, okay, if I submit it on time, I'm gonna get like full points or, you know, they require this many words, so I get this many points. So always look at your rubrics for all of our assignments. Every module is three assignments. You're gonna have your case assignment, your SLP, and your discussion post. Most classes have four modules, I think pretty much all of them. <laughs> and sometimes your SLP might be a quiz or a paper. Your case assignment typically is a paper or an activity in that regard. Get to know your professors, set up your work area, and just be ready to go. And I would say as soon as you get your first discussion in, try to write a paper maybe by the weekend so that you don't have to your case assignment, your SLP, the second week of class. Or if you do both of them in the second week, it's no problem. But just make sure that you kind of know each day what you're going to be working on and submitting. And so it, my last advice is just really reach out and we don't want you to feel alone. I always tell my students, I am full of the most random information. And so you don't know unless you ask. Maybe you can't find a resource in the library. Maybe you aren't sure how to set up text to get a grade notification. We can help you with that. So that being said, I'm excited for you. Hopefully that this information was helpful. I'm gonna turn the time over to Dr. Deliero and he's gonna discuss one of, one of the topics that I think is really crucial and get ready to take some good notes. We're gonna talk about academic writing. Dr. Deliero, I turn the time over to you. Uh, on behalf of the faculty, I just wanna extend my warmest welcomes to all of you. Uh, it's always the most exciting time of the month for us to welcome in a brand new crop of leaders into the Trident family. And so uh, we all look forward to interacting with you, getting to know you and, and seeing what great things you accomplish in and out of the classroom. Uh, so this section focuses on academic writing. Uh, it's, one of, uh, it's one of the points of concern for some students, especially who have been out for a while. Um, uh, it causes some anxiety. And so the goal of these next couple slides are just to relieve some of that anxiety and give you some direction to build momentum. So Michael mentioned it, um, but these first couple days, 
it's going to be really imperative for you to get the wheels going. And so I hope to provide a broad overview of what your faculty uh, will expect of you with writing and to relieve some of that anxiety for you. Uh, this first slide is just to, it's meant to, to frame your mindset for what the expectations are within academic writing and what and why and how and how is it different from what you might be used to within your military experience or business experience. So the three key differences that I kind of want that I want you to think about um, between business and slash military and academic writing are the goals of writing, the process of writing, and voice. And so when you're in the military, so the first one is the goals of writing. Uh, if you're going to graduate from a call it from a, an accredited institution, you're expected to have a high degree of written and oral communication skills. And so that is kind of what we're, we're helping you, helping prepare you for upon graduation. So the first um, the first uh, point that I want you to think about is the goal of writing. So when you're in the when you're in a business environment and when you're in a military environment, your goal of writing, the only purpose you're writing is for mission accomplishment and to accomplish objectives. The difference within what you're going to find in an academic environment is that that goal, the goal of writing is to help you become a better communicator. And so there are some steps and some areas that we look for as your faculty to help you become a better thinker and to help you become a better writer, a more effective writer. Um, <clears throat> so for example, um, within the military and, and you know in business, you're, you're writing to accomplish this objective um, as quickly and efficiently as possible. And when you're in your academic classes, we're looking for your logic and rational thought development of your ideas. So we're not, so sometimes this comes out um, when you're answering questions as maybe a two or you know a one to two sentence or a one to three sentence reply to answer a question because you're in that mindset of answering the question and giving the conclusion as quickly and efficiently as possible. But that's not the only thing, that's actually not the most important thing that your faculty is looking for. It's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for the reasons why and how you came to that, to those conclusions, your critical thinking skills and your logic and your, th and your rational thought development. And so that takes more time and it takes more um, effort to lay out those arguments and to do the research uh, from different sources and uh, integrate the background readings into your experience to, to support your conclusion. So your faculty member is not just looking for the answer, we're not just looking for the conclusion. We're looking for your your reasons why your 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 the thinking and the and the evidence behind it and your logic and your rational thought development. The second the second um, area of um, that, that that's a challenge between or the difference between military and business writing versus academic writing is the process of writing. So when you're in a business environment or you're in a military environment. Your superior would give you a, a command or a or an objective to write up a memo or write a, write this up or write that up, uh, do a report. You pass it off to your superior. Your superior edits it, adds a couple things, passes it off to their superior. And before a decision is made, there's two or three hands that have touched this you know this document. That's different than what you're going to find here and what your experience will be in an academic environment because you are the single author of this document of this assignment. So you have to go through the brainstorming. You have to go through the um, you have to go through the outlining and the editing and the drafting and the formatting and all those things take time. And so you have to consider those elements when you uh, when you develop your time management um, your time management plan for for these classes. The third um, key difference is voice. So if you haven't noticed, especially in the military, you're big on uniforms. I mean, you're dressing the same, you're often talking the same, and sometimes that comes out in your writing. Often, that that comes out in your writing, and so that causes some issues because it it raises some concerns for academic integrity issues. Some so we want you to be aware of that. Your instructor will be looking for your independent your independent understanding of these concepts. And so we're looking for you to paraphrase different ideas from a variety of different 
readings and background sources. We're looking for your for you to summarize uh, some of these um, these ideas in your own words. So quotations are great, but your instructor will care more about your understanding of these concepts. And that is different than stripping out a quotation and sticking it in your paper. It's fundamentally different and it takes a lot more critical thinking and a lot more time and effort to summarize these different ideas in your own words and put them in. But that is what your instructor is looking for. And if you if you consider these things, you're gonna, it's you you will reap the benefits of of this program at, upon graduation and i promise you you'll become a more effective uh, communicator and contributor to your organizations the next slide um, is just meant to give you a general overview of academic writing structure and so uh this this is not an all-inclusive slide uh, these are just some tips that i as an instructor i see uh, students kind of missing these points and so as a writer that you may not have as much experience in an academic environment or maybe you've been out for a while. Uh, I hope that this gives you some direction to get the wheels going and build up that momentum early on. Um, and so there will be, there are more resources, more in-depth resources like the ones that Michael mentioned um, within the Writing Center and our resources drop down. So please make use of that. Um, but here, I just want to frame your mind into what we're looking for as, as ter in terms of structure and content. Uh, so the first, so there's, there's basically gonna be three main parts of your essay. The introduction, the body, and the conclusion. And so your introduction is kind of like any presentation you may give, like a PowerPoint presentation. It's, you always have a first slide that tells your audience what you're gonna be talking about and why it's important. And so that's your introduction paragraph. You're just gonna be basically pitch, just, overviewing, presenting an overview of what you're gonna be talking about and why it's important. So I want you to think about this because there's a there's an important statement in, in your introduction that your instructors look for and it's called a thesis statement. Essentially, this tells your reader what the purpose is of your essay. And so a great way for you to know what your instructor is looking for is to look at the module learning outcomes. So every module, you have four modules, Every module will have learning outcomes on the home page. So every module will have learning outcomes for every assignment on the home page. That is basically what your instructor is looking for, and that is what your that your your instructor will be looking for your or measuring your understanding of those concepts. And those are great statements uh, to put into your introduction into your introduction paragraph, and to help ground you when you're answering these questions. So you know the. In addition to the learning outcomes, your assignments will have like three or four questions that you have to answer. Use those learning outcomes as like the lenses to, to view those questions. So address the learning outcomes through answering the questions. So th consider that with your thesis statement development uh, and definitely make use of those module learning outcomes because they give you, they give you what your instructor is looking for on each assignment. From there, you've got your body paragraphs. And so one of my best, one of my, uh, the best recommendation, recommendations I could give you when you're first getting off, getting going in your writing um, is, is uh, to break up those questions into sections and subsections using headers and subheaders. So just like on a PowerPoint presentation, you have headers that tell your reader or tell your audience what this, what this slide is about. Same thing within your essay, include a header, include subsections within that, that make it overtly obvious to your instructor that you are addressing this part of the assignment. This is the key term that you're gonna be addressing. Um, so not only does it provide some structure for you, for your essay, but it also makes it very obvious for your instructor that you are hitting all those points within your, within your assignment. Um, and so, again, going back to the content of, of, your, of your assignment. Is your instructor looking for the conclusion? Uh, yeah, sure, we're looking for your answer to the question, but again, we're looking for the reasons why. And so when you draft your paragraphs, I kind of want you to think about aiming for about four to seven sentences. Uh, trust me, nobody's gonna be counting your sentences out, but I think it's a good guideline for you because if you're going below that four sentence mark, 
then you're probably being a little bit too brief or concise and you're not exploring the topics or discussing the topics in detail. So make sure you're going back and citing some evidence um, from your background readings. Again, we're looking for APA citations um, and, and some evidence, some objective research and evidence to support your conclusions. And if you're going above that seven sentence mark, then you're probably going, you're probably uh, rambling on too much or you could make that into a more concise structure to better highlight your ideas or you just need to break up that longer paragraph into some more some more paragraphs and maybe two or three paragraphs but you don't want to go on and on a, a page and a half of text of block text um, you really want to break that up into small sections and subsections include those headers uh, and make it really easy for your instructor to to pick out those main points um, if you're if you're struggling, again, I, I talked about the thesis statements above, uh, but if you're struggling uh, in, in terms of how to start a paragraph and what your instructor is looking for, I always, I always mention these points right here. Define the key term, explain the application of the key term to the assignment, and then discuss why the concept is important to either the module learning outcome or just the class in general. Um, specifically and with, with specific focus to that to the to the module learning outcome so those three points I think if you cover those that should get you to that four to seven mark include some evidence in there to support your ideas and that's a great way of just getting started this is not going to be the perfect way I can promise you that your instructor will give you feedback but it's really important for you to take that feedback and then just continue to build build upon it your instructor is not looking for perfection. In fact, you shouldn't expect um, expect that of your instructor. We're here to make you better communicators and better critical thinkers. That's our value. That's that's our objective. And so, when you look, when you explore these concepts in a variety of different ways by defining and explaining and discussing um, the value of these concepts, you're you're in essence exploring these concepts from a variety of different ways, and you're thinking about them in different ways. So consider that when you're drafting up your, your assignments. And then the conclusion paragraph is the last part of your ass assignment. And it, and it really just reflects, it's just kind of like a reflection of your introduction. Your introduction is telling your, your audience what you're going to be talking about, why it's important, and your conclusion is going to be basically sta stating what you already have talked about and why that's important. And so they're, they're mirror images of, e of each other. Um, again, this is not uh, an all-inclusive, these are not all-inclusive suggestions. It's just simply to get the wheels going. And over time, you're going to receive more detailed feedback from your instructor become, uh, to become a better written communicator, uh, a better writer. Uh, and so I just highly suggest that you, that you accept that feedback and, you know, with, with willing and open arms. So I hope that helps. Again, refer back to the resources under the, you know, the writing resources under the resources tab if you need some more in-depth um, advice. Always reach out to your instructor because we love hearing from you and we love to, to support you in this process. Honestly, it is, it is our honor to, to serve you. Uh, so please make use of us. Thank you, Dr. Del Hero. We also have resources to help students outside of the classroom. First, there's Alumni Fire, which is for all current students and Trident alumni. The URL is on your screen now. This is a place where you can connect with other students, alumni, faculty, and staff to get advice on your education, career, and more. For more information, reach out to alumni at trident.edu. We also have Career One Stop, which is a source for career skills development, such as resume reviews, interview practice, and more. This can be accessed on the front page of your student portal right after you log in. If you have any questions on that, reach out to Trident for careers at trident.edu. That's Trident, the number four careers at trident.edu. And now we're gonna move on to today's Q&A session. Okay, got that out of the way this week. My first the talking on the phone with the mute on. So we've all done that before, but um, welcome Tasha Kiriton and Dr. Del Hierro, George, uh, Dr. George Del Hierro. He does have a first name. Uh, and thank you for the great presentation, everyone. And 
We're going to do things a little differently today, um, which probably doesn't matter for those in the audience because this is your first time here. But uh, we, we will handle the Q&A the same way, though. So, and we do have a few questions in already. And this is actually a popular question. And I'm actually, I'm actually glad this is a popular question because it says a lot about the students who attend Trident. I'm going to send this one to you, Dr. Del Hierro. Is it okay to turn in assignments way before the due date? Yeah, so this is a popular question. <clears throat> uh, well, first, I mean, way before the due date is, you know, I don't know what that means, but yes, you can submit assignments before the due date. If it's way before the due date and you feel uncomfortable with that, then I would recommend you reach out with, to your instructor. I recommend reaching out to your instructor anyways, if you're gonna be early or if you're going to be late. Um, that way your instructor is aware um, of, of your situation and can support you. Uh, one of the issues that I may that I would just rec that I would just uh, caution you on is, is submitting your assignments after you get feedback. So if you're if you're submitting your 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 module one, um, you know, I mean, or actually your module two before you receive the, receive the feedback from module one, then you may be missing uh, key you know, some important feedback for you to implement into module two. So I would just caution you on that. If you're on a time crunch and you really need to uh, push out these assignments before you leave on vacation or for work or something, just reach out to your instructor and let them know um, your, your situation so that they can be flexible with you and, and work with you. Um, so that's, those are, those are my thoughts in regards to that. Uh, I know I know uh, Tasha works with this a lot too. So do you, did I miss anything, Tasha? Do you have anything else to add? That was great, Dr. Del Yero. I had a question from a student the other week who, along the same vein, was like, if I submit early before the due date, can I just keep reworking the assignment? And I I love his suggestion, which is talk to your instructor. That's not necessarily what it's meant for, but we want you to have the flexibility to plan ahead around your life so if you need to submit early usually there's no problem i would encourage it and just make sure you are applying the feedback that you get from your instructor and if you're submitting discussions early don't forget to go back and do your peer responses when your peers respond which might be a week or two later at the normal time so just keep that in mind uh, I really appreciate whenever Tasha speaks because she brings up really good you know, ideas that make me keep talking and thinking about this <laughs> because uh, um, I think she mentioned it earlier on in the in the pre in her part of the presentation where you know where students kind of break up their time management strategy is they'll break up um, the assignments by weeks so there's always there's three assignments for every every module you have the case assignment the SLP assignment and then your discussion. So your case and your SLP or your written assignments, some students focus on the case assignment one week, submit that in, and then on the, on the second week, they'll do the SLP or vice versa, uh, whatever works for you. So you don't have to go in order doing working on the case assignment and then the, the SLP. You have that flexibility. It's one of the beautiful things about the Trident system is that you have that flexibility to work on these assignments in a way that work best for you. So read through those assignments, uh, work on that time management schedule, and yes, you you have that flexibility to submit early. Um, and then, if you're going, if something's going to pop up and you need us to be flexible with you, and you're going to submit late, then instructors are, we're, you know, that's that's who we are. You're that's those are our students. That, that that's what we are prepared to to work with. So don't hesitate to reach out and use us as resources. An important follow-up question. I'll start with Tasha on this. Is that what are what are common reasons why someone would submit something early? Sure. Uh, so students will often have vacation planned. Maybe they are going on a military mission, something that pulls them away from their day to day, or maybe they're in multiple classes at once and they want to make sure that they're tracking well. So if you have two weeks for a module, maybe they do one module one week for one class and one the other. So there's a there's a myriad of different reasons why someone would submit. But I think the key is what I love. I love hearing students say, 
I want to submit early because it shows that they're trying to plan their life around their education. And that's the whole purpose of our, our eight week classes is I have students who are going to be away for two or three weeks, but they map it out and time it out with their assignments and they still are in class. They just work with their instructor on submitting early, maybe catching up a little bit. There's a little bit of flexibility there. So key is communicate. Yeah, I wanted to bring it up because, of course, during this fast track session, we there is a holiday, uh, which uh, students can use to their advantage getting ahead. Uh, next question, uh, I think I think I'll start this one with you, Tasha. Is that with a student who's they're currently deployed ten hours ahead of Pacific time, and they're not fully confident that their TIA has been approved yet and submit it, what advice do you have for them? Uh, so it depends on the branch of the military. I'm assuming it might be Army based on that because Air, if, if, it, if this for the June session today, um, Air Force deadline was a week ago, Navy Coast Guard was a week prior. So if it was- You were Army, right, Tasha. Yeah, Army. Okay. Um, right now, they should be fine as long as they have tuition assistance. We are submitting our list of students using TA with the Army to the Army this Friday. I know this doesn't apply to everybody, but real quick. Um, and so there's only two bases on the mainland, so it sounds like you're overseas, that is actually using Army Ignited for tuition assistance. So. Um, I think we lost Tasha, or is that on my end? Someone confirm? Correct, yeah, Tasha, oh. you, Tasha's frozen. Okay, so uh, so to the to the student who asked that question, and although it, although that was that does apply to a specific person's situation, we we, ha we do have a lot of military students so I wanted to put that out there in case anyone is in a similar situation and the way we're going to address that is we'll connect that person with their appropriate advisor so we can make sure that you're squared away but if you have if you ever have any issues like that whether it's now or in the future don't hesitate to reach out to uh, your student success advisor Next question. This one is uh, for you, Dr. Del Hierro. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I've been out of school for over a year. Uh, do you feel that it's feasible to actually pass the capstone? I'm having a bit of anxiety about this. So I think Tasha could probably better could probably better respond to this. But first. I mean, is actually I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this one off to Tasha because because she's more aware of the of capstones and, and where this student might be coming from on the first day of class. Uh, so, Tasha, are you are you able to to handle this one to address it? Great. Sure, so we're nervous about passing the capstone. Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah just yeah. Re, just repeat what the technical difficulties. The student has been out of school for over a year and the have a lot of anxiety around capstone and they're worried that it, whether or not it's something they can pass. Sure, uh, that, that's a valid concern. I apologize for the technical issues. So I don't, there are different ways to approach this, but think about it in the sense that your capstone is going to be not, it might not necessarily be harder as a class. It can sound intimidating, but the idea is that you wanna demonstrate that you understand the basic tenets of your degree. And so one of your class might be like one of Dr. Del Yero's classes, which is ethics. It's solely focused on ethics. And your capstone might touch a little bit on there, might touch a little bit on leadership. And so it takes these little bits and pieces from all of like your core courses and it compiles it into assignments. So it's still going to be the case assignment, the SLP, the discussions in the four module format. 
So you're going to log in and go, oh, this looks very similar to what I've been doing. If you have access to your previous assignments, I don't want to worry anybody that you have to have those because you don't. But it is great to have those and review them because some of those capstones draw from similar type assignments. And so if you don't want to necessarily like reinvent the wheel, maybe you're referring to that and creating new content. But um, I always talk to students and say, just think of it as kind of more broad topics of things that you've discussed, not necessarily harder. Uh, and if you look at that way, usually you get in the class and go, oh yeah, no, I can totally do this. But for a capstone at the bachelor's degree, you have to ensure that you pass it with a C or higher. And that's basically to tell Trident and the world, like, I understand that the information in this degree, I'll be fine. C minus would not be passing. And at the master's level, it's a B minus or higher. Um, and so it's, I always, I've mentioned this here, even it's a points game. If you're getting tired at the end of your degree and you're just like, ah, I'm not going to submit those last few assignments, then um, it could impact your grade. And you just really want to make sure you get as many points as possible. Yeah, I'll just piggyback on that too. I think I was thrown off with, some but with being in the first day of class webinar and we're talking about the capstone which is typically at the end of the program but i will say this about the trident system um and we hear this a lot with math classes like oh i'm not a math person i don't i'm, I'm afraid of enrolling in in this class uh make no mistake like if you're in this class you first of all your advisor is not going to put you in a class that you're not prepared for if you've done the work and you're ready to do the capstone and if you've done the work and you're ready to move on to the next class, then then you you already have the skills and abilities to pass the class. So have have confidence in yourself um, with that, and have confidence in us that we wouldn't steer you um, off the deep end or you know set you up for failure. Same thing with a master's program. If you're if you're done with the bachelor's program, you you've already you're ready for the next step, and every level. Every, level, every degree level and every class is, is designed to be stackable. It's, it's an appropriate challenge. And if you're done with a master's, we have, we have professional doctorate programs that, that often scare students away, but really you've already, you're already at the, a level of, of competency to take the next challenge. And so although it may sound intimidating to, to enroll in a capstone class or intimidating to enroll into a math class, or a master's or a doctorate like the the hardest thing to do is just taking that first step and once you've taken that first step then take another step and then and then take another step and before you know it you're already at the end of the at the end of the class or at the end of the program ready for the next challenge so i just wanted to, to plug that in there and if you are challenged you know if it does if you are overwhelmed reach out to your advisor or reach out to your instructor because we're fully prepared to help you get through the class and be successful. We're absolutely invested in your success. No one gets bonus points for you to fail the class. Um, we don't want that. Great, thank you. And so we have a couple more questions. Uh, actually, going to send the next one to Tasha, and it's question is about our challenge exams and exactly what they are and how they can help um, at, you know, students. Sure. The challenge exams are brand new. I think they've been out for about a month now. So we're all excited about them. Sometimes we come into degrees having so much experience from our life and, you know, maybe we know about a topic or we've taken it somewhere before and it didn't work out. So right now we currently have three classes. I want to say sociology, psychology, and biology. I'm pretty sure are the ones. Um, and the idea is that you would work with your advisor. You would let them know in, if you see it on your degree plan or you need some general education credit, you would decide if you are interested in one of those, talk to your advisors. They'll send you study guides even, and you have a chance to take it and test out of it for credit 
in your degree program with this. It doesn't cost anything and your advisor would work, get you access to it. You just roughly tell them the time frame that you want to take it. And let's say you don't pass it. The, the nice thing about it is that you can take the class and then the tuition would cost for the class, but it's not going to be like a, a negative thing on your transcript if you didn't pass it. But if you passed it, then we would satisfy that credit. So it's kind of awesome. Um, I believe it's 100 questions. You get 90 minutes to take it. And uh, the fact that they provide study guides, I think, is a nice thing in advance just as a refresher. So I hope that answers the question. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll piggyback on that because I, it's kind of within the, the, the area that I'm in. Um, so yeah, you, you, you receive this textbook, you have to study this textbook, and you take a 100-question uh, test on it. If you pass it, you get credit for it. So the way you want to look about look at these things is that first it's free. It's saving you money. If so, if you need the general education credit in those areas, first speak to your advisor to see if you actually need to need that, that you need that credit. But second of all, um, it'll save you, you know, the 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 money and the the time um, to to actually take that the those classes. So it's a great benefit for you. I am personally not a great test taker, nor do I like to memorize facts and figures, so it's, it doesn't work really well for me, but the motivation of saving that money would probably be something that I would want to take advantage of. And because it's free, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great win for you. So, and, and just a, an awesome offering for that, that Trident has for you. Okay, great. Thank you. Actually, we've just we actually had a couple more questions come in. Uh, one of them, I think we're going to circle back on because it's it, it, it'll be a bit of a longer answer, and I think it's one that's going to be best handled offline. And then another question, I'm going to start with you, Dr. Del Hierro. I think you'll be best for this one. Is that I've been out of school for 15 years and have never had an online course. I've only taken uh, taken courses in person, and that's the statement. I and I, I'm assuming they're looking for cut advice on how to adapt to this environment. Yeah, I think I mean Tosh and I can talk. I mean, we could have an entire webinar on this. But hey, don't, of, don't give me ideas. So. <laughs> most of what we what we talked about can can help you so the first thing is you know you've, you're not alone and those feelings are normal if you're having anxiety uh, the key is to build momentum in my opinion i'm going to keep this as brief as i can build momentum so just do the next like the, the next thing to do you know the next thing to complete the class what do you need to do to complete the class well open up your computer press the power button look at the class and then the next thing you do you know, read through an assignment so just take it take take baby steps and i would honestly just recommend that you stay in close contact with your advisor to give you very specific tips so if, if you feel like a need to you know you're looking at the background reading one of the things that students especially new students feel like they need to do is they'll pull up the background reading and then and then they they become overwhelmed with looking at all of these readings and and they have to read, they feel like they need to read through everything to complete out the, the question, you know, to complete out the assignments. And that isn't the case. It took me years <laughs> of schooling for me to figure that thing out, to figure that out. You don't have to read every single word of every single background reading. My, my, my uh, advice to you would be to read through the questions and to read the background readings with purpose, to answer those questions. And then from there, you're just building your your essay. So take the tips that I use, that I gave you uh, in this webinar to try and put pull something together. Um, but don't don't become frozen. Yeah, you know, when you when you feel like you're frozen, go for a walk and then come back and then and then hit it again. But overcoming that um, you know that freeze is is half the battle. That's the, that's your biggest thing, you know. So be aware of those moments and then just get through it. 
and submit the assignment and then ask for, you know, if you don't get a grade that you want or that, you know, is, is passing, then reach out to your instructor to, to see what else, you, you know, to find out what else you can do to, to get through the class and to pass the grade. But be aware of those moments where, where you become frozen um, and overwhelmed and then reach out to your advisor uh, because your, your advisors are just pros at walking people off the ledge. Um, so those are just a couple of my ideas, but you're not alone. Okay. Uh, any, anything to add, Tasha? If not, oh, of we'll... course, I'll be okay. I'll I'll be brief because I know um, with time. But I had a student last week in the last week of her class, and I had been calling her throughout the session. We hadn't connected. And she hadn't submitted much because she said she just was nervous about writing an essay. And my heart broke because I wish we had had that conversation the first week of class. And we spent a long time and we went through things on the phone and helped her build up her confidence in doing that. And so um, she was able to write an essay and we're working to help her out with things. But I, I guess my thought is, is what Dr. Del Yaro was saying is take time to be in class. If you're coming in at the last minute, if you're not taking the time to just click around, I'm not saying spend hours a day, but have a plan because no one is going to make you go to school. You're going to start to find resources that we have for you. You're going to build relationships with people at the school who want to help you. And so we have a team here. We have the information. How much are you willing to just work through? The beginning is always going to be tough because you're transitioning to this new place. You're like a new student at a new school, but you're not alone, like he said. And so when those times get hard, don't pull away, reach out and respond to an email. Maybe it's just, I'm not doing well. Can we talk? You know? Yeah, what Tasha said is so is so great it's a good point to remind yourself whether you're in an online environment or a brick and mortar environment there's going to be a learning curve so you know I, <clears throat> it reminds me of like the first day of class or the first welcome week at, at a university i used to work for and we'd all wear yellow t-shirts and you know students would come and, and not know where their class is or the building or the bathroom and so you need people like us to, you need your advisors you need your instructors that, to show you where to drop off the you know, drop off your assignment or submit your assignment or where to find your background readings. So those learning curves are going to happen regardless of the institution from you or, or that you attend. Uh, the trick is to, to not let those that learning curve and those challenges, those frustrations uh, stop you from making progress in these in these first couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. And I know, I know we're starting to run over time, but I, I did want did want to add, and because I think this is important, is that the fact that there's been a fair amount of people who have expressed, I don't want to say, maybe not necessarily anxieties, but just concerns. That's actually great, and it's a very mature thing to do because if you're aware of what you don't know, that you're going to put yourself in the best position for success. So. Be honest about that, because I was in when I started grad school. I was in a in a situation where my comfort with numbers was was non-existent, and instead of trying to pretend, I was just straightforward and honest about it. And and ten years later, I'm much much better. So th those of you who have expressed those concerns, today, you're doing a great job. Uh, and so. We're going to end things a little differently today. I'm going to play you a video of one of our uh, one of our recent alumni, and he's kind of kind of talk about his journey. And so, thank you everyone for your participation today. Good luck this session. And on behalf of Trident, Dr. Del Hierro and Tasha, we wish you well. Great. Good luck, everyone. See you in class. I've been in the Army right now for 23 years, and I'm getting ready to retire here within the next few weeks. And I just felt like in my life, my my uh, my military career wasn't complete. And um, in 2017, I started a quest to go to college. Um, when I was younger, um, I was told that I wasn't smart enough. I was told that everything that I have achieved now, that I couldn't achieve it. 
and I put my heart and soul into the military and I put the deployments and my family and everything in front of what I wanted to do and what I needed to do. And so, uh, long story short, I end up uh, being a part of Trident University. My dreams would have never been achieved without Trident University. This is now the reason why I can say I'm an alumni of a prestigious university and because of the simple fact that I was able to take all my non-believers and turn them now into believers. Thank you. Trident alumni forged by the tip of the spear.